Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryant. We're just hello, talking to the pre-show. About a couple things, you get a chance to come check us out live here on Twitch. We're like, hey, when was the first time you really got real band, you know, broadband, like a full megabit? Ooh, things mm -hmm. like that. But we got yeah. a pretty big show for you this week. We're going to be talking about the NVIDIA drivers that are here. Yay. They've been foretold. Our yes. savior. I got a K-Disc Mark thing. You know, like, uh, we're, we're going to pretend we're Windows users in a little bit. Just going to tell you about an M.2 hat. And of course, llamas. Stay yes, tuned. llamas Stay going tuned. open source. <laughs> but did everybody see the news? I, I've been, um, a lot of it's the itch. You know, every couple of years, you just get that itch to build a new PC, right? Whether or not you really, really need it. It's like, man, I want to build a new PC. I've been looking for an excuse to um, upgrade the system in the studio, Threadbooper, which is a Gen 1 Threadripper, you know, but it still gets the job done. That's the yeah. biggest problem with it. It still gets the job done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, curse you. Why do you keep working? Which, you know, goes to the testament. How long have PCs been good enough, right? Yeah. Right. And when I say gets the job done, runs the show. It's the nerve center for the studio. And um, I, I've been exploring different options. I'm like, maybe I'll go Epic. Or maybe I can upgrade this to like a Gen 2 a Threadripper and still get, you know, maybe get another year or two out of it. And then there were leaks and rumors about AMD releasing epic cpus on socket am5 or current okay. socket i'm like well then i guess we're just gonna quit we're just gonna put a, put the brakes on <laughs> we're just gonna wait and see what happens here because i might just be able to get out of this on the cheap kids we got the news about them yesterday yeah and, and they have lots of pcie lanes which made ven very happy i saw your tweet <laughs> that was me complaining about them not having a oh, lot they of PCI weren't... Express lanes. Oh, oh, I thought it was reverse. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> they have 28 PCI Express lanes. Oh, okay. The Epic 4004 CPUs. The only thing I was interested in, why do you need, how many do I have right now? I got, uh, what, 64. How many do I, all of them? I use every single one of them. Why? Multiple oh, yeah. capture cards. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it has fewer. That's sad. Epic has 128. Threadripper ah. Pro, 128. Threadripper, 64. Intel Xeons at least have 40. I'm like, yeah. I, I wasn't I wasn't even looking for 60. I was like, like 40 something, and I'll be good. Mm -hmm. I can make that work. Like I'm willing to like move stuff around here. I'm like, if I can save a few bucks, make a modern system. I, AMD's like, nah, that's what we can do. 28. That's all you get. I'm like, well, all right, back back to uh searching. Back to searching. Yeah. Little okay. doubt about that. Little I'm grumpy sorry. about that. I'm like, grr, but hey, you know, I'm sure there's a use case for an epic CPU with 28 lanes of guy. I don't know, man. Good luck. Good luck. How about you, Joe Bryant? You've uh, finally had the belated birthday <laughs> Disneyland trip. Finally, it's been, uh, we've been trying for, for the last few weeks, but we've been just so busy with doing family things like graduations and, and all kinds of things going on. So, but I had a great time with my Steve husband at Disneyland on Sunday to celebrate my birthday. And what was really, really cool, it was a very special day for me. The nice cast members, when they saw my Disneyland, Disneyland birthday button that I, that I wore proudly on my shirt, they let me and Steve ride one of my favorite roller coaster coasters two times in a row, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And since there was an hour wait for it, that was pretty nice. <laughs> so I got to just uh, hop off and they said, oh, take this empty seat and hop on and and uh, go through uh, uh, one of my favorite themed rides and roller coasters and travel through Bryce Canyon with Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And I, I have a cool retro Tomorrowland shirt that I'm wearing right now that Steve got me as a present on our Disneyland trip. And I love it. It's so, so cool. And uh, Tomorrowland retro. And I got these socks too. They're so cute. 
matching socks <laughs> for my outfit. So the next time I go to Disneyland, I'll be wearing these. <laughs> and that's the classic people mover. It's oh, it's those not... are brilliant. That, yeah. that was will match Steve's walker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, he probably will have an orange walker, I'm sure, because that's one of our favorite colors. Gotta get him the orange tennis balls to go on. It. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he got me a few other shirts, too. I, I got two other uh, Disneyland shirts, and then he got himself one as well. <laughs> and a model of Space Mountain. So they just, Disneyland just put out uh, an official model kit for Space Mountain. And he All right. That. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. It was. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hop into it with a little bit of a blast from the past. Something that uh, when I first saw the news, I saw the press release. I'm like, where was this? Like 26 years ago, right? Yeah, so true. So remember Winamp? Yes, the beloved media player that came out in April in 1997 on Windows. So, well, the Llama Group actually announced it will be open sourcing Winamp on September 24th due to budget constraints and company reorganization. So it's kind of sad because it sounds like they wouldn't have open sourced it if it weren't for them having uh, problems in the company. But this is a wonderful thing. And Alexandra Sabandjian? I think I'm I'm, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. Anyways, you can check the show notes for the correct spelling and name. The, he's the CEO of Winamp, uh, talks about what they will be focusing on in the future. So he says, this is a decision that will delight millions of users around the world. Yay, like us Linux users. Our focus will be on new mobile players and other platforms. We will be releasing a new mobile player at the beginning of July. Still, we don't want to forget the tens of millions of users who use the software on Windows and will benefit from the thousands of developers' experience and creativity. And that is true. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that they are seeing the benefit of open sourcing Winamp. Um, but... You know, I was thinking that then, but now that Winamp is being open sourced, not only is it possible that we can have our own Winamp player for Linux, but we can see that code integrated into many audio players on Linux, including XMMS and Audacious, and they can have all the Winamp functionality and support all of its audio and visual plugins, which I would be very excited about. Well, because we don't really know, well. because they didn't <laughs> mention what type of license they're going to release I know, this under. And, and oh. that we don't know. I, I have already seen in yet. chat, we already get the well, actually, like, no, I open source, and like, yeah, source available, whatever. If you know what people mean, like, you know, there's a reason people don't yeah. invite some people to parties. Uh, yeah. But yeah in the spirit of that like what really went down here man like there weren't a lot of people hanging out in the uh developing one app you remember one app from way back when right that was oh, the thing yeah it was mm -hmm. the gem then one app three it just went downhill from there one app three was bad nobody yeah. liked it they tried to do a rewrite uh they changed the language for it and mm -hmm. it broke a lot of compatibility and like one app's just a relic from the past like if you're over the age of uh under the age of like 30 you're like what is a one app maybe like maybe a meme has existed at some point in time but as you might imagine, not a lot of people were left working on yeah. a media player, an MP3 media player, like visualizers were cool. And like, even back in the day, we had XMMS and things of the like, the WinApp clones. So it's just kind of been sitting there, not doing anything. What this is really going to allow, I don't, we got, we got to find out what, like what license they end up releasing the code on, but one way or the other, what this will allow, no matter what is, um, the ability for the community to take over maintenance. Yeah. Well, that's something you're going to be seeing. Yeah, this is like 20 years too late for it like, to really matter. <laughs> it is, but it's still really nice yeah. to see. And it, it is. I know a lot of the young people today don't know, even know what Winamp is. Just a curiosity. There's, yeah. It's not a huge I mean, for us, our old timers were like, hey, this is kind of cool. And like they avoided using the term open source in the press announcement. And people are already reading into that. And I'm like, just sit back and wait and see what happens. How about that? Like, yeah. How about that? <laughs> Try that on instead of sitting around spinning your wheels, speculating like, oh, I'm going to read it. I'm like, just let's see what happens because it doesn't matter one way or the other. This is just a morbid curiosity. There's nothing to be learned here. This is just fun. 
have some fun. Lighten up. Yeah. It's good to see. I'm not going to fall into the old trap. It's real easy to get into the trap of not good enough, isn't it? Like they're yeah, doing something, they're it releasing is. it. You get to look at it. Like, is, is, <laughs> do you really need your first reaction to run up? Like, well, that's not good enough. <laughs> I'm like, don't you get tired of being mad on the internet every day? Come on. <laughs> Why not, people? That's me telling Aww. you this. <laughs> I never get mad on the internet. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. That, like, that, that's some people's entire identity. And I'm watching it, it is, get worse and worse and worse with people. And I'm like, it you have to take time to smile, man. Like, look at this. But like, yeah. oh, that'd be cool to play around with. <laughs> Calm down with the not good enough, man. Yes. So true. <laughs> However. Something really screw exciting. Screw this next company. I hate them. Oh, so mad. <laughs> so angry. We're talking about NVIDIA. NVIDIA drivers, this is the promised driver. This is 55. Five, four, two. You know, the internet yeah. was very hopeful about what this was going to bring. Now I want you to gather around because we actually need to celebrate NVIDIA doing a good. And yes. this, this is ready for testing and it's going to make some of you extraordinarily happy. The rest of you, you know, the 20% of you with AMD cards, you're like, rawr. And I'm like, that's cool too. We can still hang out. Uh, 555 five, five comes with the explicit sync for the Wayland mm -hmm. crowd. Woo that's going to. Sort your freezes, all your jitters, all the other stuff. It's just magic. It's, uh, yeah, kind of cool. On top of that, I posted uh, some screenshots yesterday. Yeah. And um, on the social medias and our super secret Discord, it's using the mm -hmm. GSP firmware by default, if available, which is the open source firmware. Yeah, that, that was really cool to see it that early because they kept saying that it's going to come in uh, fi our, our, their nvidia r560 drivers but it, it showed up a little earlier so that was cool <laughs> right and i'm like oh that's cool it's like right there in your face and one that the first thing you see when you build the driver because over here on debian 12 what did i do yesterday i'm like hey let's upgrade the driver to that on debian 12 that old distribution um right out of the gate it gives you an option to install the mit gpl kernel modules or the proprietary ones like, that's mm -hmm. your first option in the installer. I'm like, well, Yay! let's try the GPL ones, which is going to make life easier if you're familiar with that. Like if it, you're running like a bleeding edge kernel, you probably don't have to wait for that support to get added into it for it, it to be able to build against it, which is I was really happy to see that. And support mm -hmm. for using EGL instead of GLX for the NVIDIA frame buffer capture. This is exciting for like six nice. of us on the internet <laughs> because there's an OBS plugin to take care of that. You, you got to patch the driver because this is something only available in like Quadros whatever they're called these days, but it's real easy to patch that functionality into the regular peasant drivers that the rest of us get to use. That gives us a pretty much uh, tax-free full screen capture in OBS without like hitting our system resources. So much better. Super cool. And by all <laughs> accounts on the internet, all the Wayland stuff is just fixed. Even um, the artist formerly known as Empty and Shot Realm Dynamic yeah. in our Discord was talking about being able to play uh, Fallout with his NVIDIA card on Wayland. And he's like, hey, it just works now. Like it's Fallout 3 or whatever. Now. Yeah, right. <laughs> A lot of people are just saying, hey, everything just works. Plenty of other fixes in the release. Um, but those are the ones I'm very excited about. And maybe, I know a big question. Like, mm -hmm. when is this coming to insert your distribution here? Why wait? <laughs> Why wait? When, yeah. it, when is this coming to Debian 12? Never. It will never come to Debian 12 at all because <laughs> it's Debian 12. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's never going to happen. It, you know, the version after this might be in Debian 13, 13 a year from now. Yeah. What do you do? You install drivers, you install the run files. The booga booga about um, the, the deterioration of the knowledge base of, yeah, you, know, you take, I, I've seen this. People are asking about this on the internet. And I tried to get, I started to think about getting involved when they say, don't install the run file. It's horrible. That's the worst way to do it. It'll destroy your system. Like, mm. <laughs> been, been doing that for 20 years with NVIDIA yeah. drivers. It never destroyed <laughs> a single system in the history of ever. If you know, like, just yeah. the basics of what you need to do here. Like, how the mighty have fallen. Come on. Yes. I, I want this to encourage some of you to go, I want to play with this. I want to play around with Wayland. I want to get it working. To look up the steps to get mm -hmm. this installed on your system. You know what? Maybe you hose your system. More than likely, you won't. Actually, I had somebody kind of, they didn't, they, they recovered. Um, I was reading a, um, a reply to one of the articles I'd written for Interfacing Linux about setting up NVIDIA drivers with a real-time kernel. 
and somebody kind of hosts their system, but like I read through it and I'm like, well, of course you did. You disabled Nuvo and you didn't install the NVIDIA drivers and you rebooted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What do you expect to happen there? Yeah. I mean, like logically, like read, <laughs> no read, through, read through what you just wrote out. And you're like, you removed the video driver completely and didn't replace it. And you reboot it. I mean, it's still, you know, you know, SSH to a TTY and you're good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, that's what they teach you when you're on Windows is to delete the old driver and reboot. But it doesn't work. I have no idea. <laughs> it's like, it, you, you wrote your evidence out there. Follow your own thought. And like, once, once you get that down. It's good, but yeah, good times for everybody. You know, I have a zero time for, you know, I use anything. I use a, you know, I got AMD, I got NVIDIA, I got Intel, I even got an Intel GPU. Joel's got an Intel GPU too. Yeah, I'm using one right now. Just have, <laughs> good to, you just want Linux support across the board. Most people have NVIDIA yeah. cards. I know it's really easy to get taught, you know, caught up in the uh, little like Lemmy sphere or the Reddit sphere and think everybody has AMD. They don't. You're a fraction of a fraction of a person. Oh, um, uh, Linux being able to work out of the box for everybody's PC is nothing but good yeah. for Linux. Oh, calm down. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, let, let us know. Leave me a comment if you are trying these drivers. Uh, I'm not even looking at Wayland until XFCE is up on Wayland. So uh, I'll see you guys in about 12, possibly 11 years if we're lucky. <laughs> I ran across um, working on the video for the lead desk, right? Mm hmm. Yes, yeah, a little are. tiny PC. And you need to benchmark the drive speed. I thought that was a metric I needed to include. What do you normally do? Traditionally, you want to measure disk speed in Linux. What do you break out HD param, right? Yeah. yeah. HD param. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have the moon glyphs memorized. I was like HD param, benchmark, read, write. And I, I Google it and I'm like, right, punch that in, punch that in, and we get the numbers. Or option B, at least for me, is you break out GNOME disk. Because you know there's a benchmark mm -hmm. utility in GNOME Disk. I love yeah. GNOME Disk. It's a slick piece of software. I give GNOME a lot of static. But I love a lot of GNOME software, and I use it day in and day out. And, you know, that's very usable once you figure out some realistic digits to punch in for the benchmark. But what if you want that simple one-click goodness, you know? Yeah. You know, and I was like, how do, how do I convey this in a YouTube video that I know people who are not tied into Linux, you know, they don't want to watch a bunch of nerd numbers in a terminal. <laughs> they, they don't understand that. And I, I was like, well, I could put like blinky lights or something around the terminal, like, you know, and jiggle some keys or something. Maybe it'll keep them entertained. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I needed something, a tool that could output the data bits in a way that a Windows user would be familiar and comfortable with. It wouldn't spook them, wouldn't scare them. <laughs> so I ran across this. This is KDesk Mark. You might already know about that. I didn't know about that. I've never looked for like a GUI tool to do this, but I, upon my search, that looks familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. That looks like, uh, I think it's Crystal Disk Mark on Windows. Yeah, Crystal Disk Mark is the All Windows right. equivalent. Yeah. Almost mm -hmm. a one to one. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you've been looking for something like this, this might be the, this thing is like, it's even in the Debian repository. So it's clearly been out for a minute. Um, and it even works on mounted drives without, having to like do any additional fossil like creating an image file to do that plenty of synthetic tests to choose from and uh yeah it works it works i'm uh, it'll be in the uh video for the elite desk that i'm working on i'm like there you yeah. go i i think um anybody can look at that you know your sequential uh reads writes 4k randoms and a bunch of other tests but you know most people just care about the reads and writes i don't even think i want to pretend people care about the uh random they don't. Uh, yeah. they, they, they just want to see big number go burr, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There'll be a link to everything in the show notes. If you don't know about it, that's probably available on every distribution. It was new to me, so I thought at least I would share it, and maybe it can be new to somebody else. All right. Uh, good news, everybody. The thing that yeah. has been out for a little bit is yeah. out, but it's for realsies, though, right? Yeah, Absolutely. So have you been patiently waiting, like myself, to use a speedy NVMe drive with your Raspberry Pi 5 and you've been waiting on that official release? Well, your wait is over and the highly anticipated official Raspberry Pi 5 M.2 Hat Plus is now available. And the Raspberry Pi 5 M.2 Hat Plus 
will let you connect an NVMe M.2 SSD drive or an AI accelerator to your Raspberry Pi 5's PCIe 2.0 interface. And the hat supports up to 500 megabytes per second, both read and write and is available for only $12. I was really impressed. I thought for sure, you know, it'd probably be 20, 30 bucks. No, it's only $12. <laughs> and here's actually something really wonderful that Raspberry Pi states on their blog. If your Raspberry Pi 5 has up-to-date firmware and an M2, M.2 hat plus attached, an installed PCIe device will be probed at power on, and if it's an NVMe drive, it will be available as a boot de device. Yay! As a boot source, <laughs> they said. <laughs> so I was happy about this because you remember in the kind of the old days of the Raspberry Pi, where 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 it was hard to get certain items to boot on it, <laughs> like USB drives and whatnot. <laughs> Girlfriend, I spent an entire live stream trying to get the um, <laughs> USB drive to boot on this Pi Four, man. Yeah, like, we were yeah, it wasn't having I it. And I finally yeah. got it up and working. Yeah. <laughs> so th this is just really exciting news. And I, I checked over at Canakit. You can buy the Raspberry Pi 5 M.2 hat plus for $12 or included with a with a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD for $79.95 or one terabyte NVMe SSD for $119.95. So right. yeah, that, that's pretty sweet. I, I like it when they do the kits and can a kit, of course. They were, would be the first to, to sell a kit. I mean, in 2024, <laughs> you got to think about it. I mean, that's probably the best looking $12 hat that you can buy new. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. not talking about just like Raspberry Pi hats. I mean, top hat, baseball hat, buy hat, probably the yes. best looking hat that you can get for 12 bucks in 2024. Yeah. Yeah. You can't even get a baseball hat for $12. No. They're all like $20, $20. Yeah. Disneyland, they're $35. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen some comments in chat. Yeah, you got to get a Pi 5, Pi availability, and they're a little expensive and all that. Now, this does connect over that funky little derpy ribbon yeah, connector thingy yeah. that I'm not a fan of, <laughs> which by default runs at uh, PCI Express 2.0, but you can clock it up to three. It's just not officially supported, but that's still only going to get you like a 500 megabyte a second peak transfer rate, and it'll take the 2230s and the 2242. M.2s for your links. Three M's connected to the M.2 device for your power, so it should be enough. Uh, it is compatible with the active cooler, Yay. which you need on a Raspberry Pi. Don't people? I've seen people as <laughs> Raspberry Pi subreddit. It's weird, man. You don't need an active cooler for Raspberry Pi. Do you know what we call people who say that online? Oh, liars, Jill. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's, that's the word we use for it. It's a little secret word that we have between, you know, anybody with a brain, a functioning nervous system, and some gray matter stuck in their head. So, yeah, you do need an active cooler for Raspberry Pi 5 unless you want to run it in a slow forever mode because it immediately thermal throttles. Yeah, yeah. Um, schematics are available, though. So if you mm -hmm. want to build your own, like, good on the Raspberry Pi Foundation for putting that out. Reasonably priced. You can take a look, see how it ticks. If you want to, like, extrapolate the design, do something new with it. But uh, yeah, what are you saying? Like, uh, you can get an NVMe drive with a hat for about a hundred bucks. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. That's incredible, actually. And I a, uh, I, actually, ahead. the markup over at Canakit is not. It's it's very little. It's like at the actual price, a one terabyte is usually between eighty and a hundred dollars. Anyways, so I got a um. Mm -hmm. What was it? Two hundred and fifty six gig NVMe Samsung, uh, connected. Uh, to a hat and it was came up with a ryzen 2400g cpu and uh eight gigs of ram for less than that mm -hmm. <laughs> something to think about kids ladies yeah. and gentlemen that's going to wrap us up for this week's weekly daily wednesdays if you like what we do want to help us out we'd really appreciate it become one of our patrons patreon.com forward slash linux game guys that's how we finance all this stuff that's how we stick it together we mm -hmm. do the shows live on Wednesday, we do Linux Themecast Weekly. On Saturday, Jordan's going to be doing a stream uh, tomorrow. Outer Worlds is what he's currently working on. If you want to come chat with him, one of our co-hosts. And, of course, we got our Track Mania that goes on Tuesdays and Fridays. If you want to play an 11-year-old physics platforming game and chat with us in Discord. Speaking of Discord, if you are a Twitch mm -hmm. sub or a patron, link that up 
You can uh, come hang out in our super secret Discord where this conversation takes place the other six days of the week. Love to see you there, along with uh, just a big gang of bonus stuff, plus your name and credits if you want to come do it. All right. Are we good? We yes. did the shilling. We did the plug in. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Until then, let's bring up some music. Yay. And roll them credits. And give our patrons some love. Our advisors, Omegas, our Theron, our executive producers, Barbrant, Scottam, Atomic, Drummer, Eshep, Ian, our Chicago Kick, Kicks Level, Empty, Blasphemia, King Bonge, our Sea Monsters, uh, Truggy, Vera, Tenuta, DSNG, Joe, Dirty Dean, our Death Notes, Turnover, Ogiwan, M. Foxon, Swine, Piper, <laughs> our Chairlings, uh, Mirror, Bike Me, Steve. <laughs> yeah, the. <laughs> Our chairlings uh, text is too small for me to read. <laughs> I do want to give a thanks to Don and Eric. Yeah. Ix, uh, yeah. The 42 and 24 month resub. All right, everybody. Get out there. Get, to, get, get up to something guys. malicious and Linux related, open source related. You know what? Source available. To get up to something source available related, that'll irritate the wrong people. <laughs> And we'll see you again next week, all right? Yeah. Bye, everyone. <laughs>